this is Dr. Bev Knox, your psychology exam study buddy. I'm here to help you pass your psychology exam. So in this episode, we're going to go over actual questions and answers on a psychology exam. This episode go hand in hand with episode number one, okay? So what I want you to do is to pay close attention to the question being asked and also the answer. I will repeat myself a few times because I want you to soak in the information. The more you hear me repeat the question and answers over and over and over again, the more likely you are to retain that information in your long-term memory. All right? Okay, let's get started. Wilhelm Wundt's laboratory work involved experimental studies of mental processes. William Wundt's laboratory work involved experimental studies of, repeat after me, mental processes. Again, I'm going to be repeating these twice, and I do want you to repeat after me, okay? That is how you're going to retain the information to pass your psychology exam. Introspection was the basic research tool used by whom in order to study people's inner sensations and mental processes. Introspection was the basic research tool used by Edward Techner in order to study people's inner sensation and mental images. Just remember, introspection was used by Edward Techner. Next, looking inward and reporting your immediate sensations, images, and feelings is called what? Introspection. That's right. So introspection is just looking inward and reporting your immediate sensations, images, and feelings. Next, research participants were asked to monitor and report their own immediate sensory reactions to differently colored objects. The research involved a technique known as introspection. <laughs> Here we go again, introspection. So don't forget, introspection is basically looking inward and report in your immediate sensations, images, and feelings. Next, the unreliability of introspection contributed to the warning popularity of structuralism. So introspection actually dealt with structuralism. And later on, we'll talk about functionalism and how that actually took over structuralism. But the unreliability of introspection. So what does that say right there? Introspection was unreliable in the field of psychology and science. Because introspection is what? The person looks inward and they report their immediate sensations, images, and feelings. So introspection was unreliable. Next, William James was a prominent American functionalist. William James was a prominent American, repeat after me, functionalist. So on your quiz, they'll, you know, you will get uh, 
answers or, or options like psychoanalysis, behaviorist, uh, structuralist, all that is wrong. William James was a prominent American functionalist. Functionalism was a school of psychology that focused attention on the adaptive value of conscious thoughts and emotions. Now that's the word I want you to remember when it comes to functionalism. Conscious. Because on your quiz, one of the options may be the word unconscious. And that would be wrong, okay? Conscious just means awareness, one's awareness. So functionalism was a school of psychology that focused attention on the adaptive value of conscious thoughts and emotions. Next. Edward Techner is to structuralism as James is to functionalism. Edward Techner is to structuralism. So you have to associate Techner with structuralism. And you have to associate William James with functionalism. Edward Techner, structuralism. William James, Functionalism. Edward Techner is to structuralism as William James is to functionalism. Next. Who was a student of William James and the first female president of the American Psychological Association? Who was a student of William James and the first female president of the American Psychological Association? Mary Witten Calkins. Mary Witten Calkins was the first female president of the American Psychological Association, and she was also a student of William James. Next. Who was the American philosopher slash psychologist who authored a textbook in 1890 for the emerging discipline of psychology? William James. Who was the American philosopher slash psychologist who authored a textbook in 1890 for the emerging discipline of psychology? William James. Next. From the 1920s into the 1960s, American psychologists emphasized the study of observable behavior. From the 1920s into the 1960s, American psychologists emphasized the study of observable behavior. Now, the view that psychology should be an objective science. Now you have to know the difference between objective and subjective. That's majorly important when taking tests, okay? Objective means what? Perhaps research studies was done on a particular subject matter and these are the results. Subjective is more personal. It may have happened to you, so therefore, that's your experience. So let's start over. The view that psychology should be an objective science that studies observable human activity without reference to mental processes is known as behaviorism. Next. 
the view that psychology should be an objective science. You have to associate behaviorism with objective science. The view that psychology should be an objective science that studies observable human activity without reference to mental processes is known as behaviorism. Behaviorists dismissed the value of introspection. Behaviorists dismissed the value of introspection. Now, do you remember what introspection is? Introspection is looking inward and reporting your immediate sensations, images, and feelings. Don't forget that is unreliable in science. So the behaviorists dismissed the value of introspection. Next. John B. Watson is to Edward Techner as observable behavior is to inner sensations. John B. Watson is to Edward Techner as observable behavior is to inner sensations. Don't forget. John B. Watson is a behaviorist. So behaviorists are all about observable behaviors, what they could actually see. But Techner was into what? Inner sensations. Next, which major force of psychology emphasized unconscious thought processes? Now here goes this term that you must understand, okay, and I said that um, earlier, unconscious versus conscious, that word, unconscious versus conscious, or consciousness, I'm sure you've heard that term, oh, this person is so conscious, what does that mean? They are aware so the word conscious means that they are aware of what's going on and unconscious is the opposite. So which major force or which major theory in psychology emphasize unconscious thought processes? That would be Freudian psychology. So Freudian psychology focused heavily on the unconscious. Again, Freudian psychology focused heavily on the unconscious thought processes. Next, humanistic psychologists focused attention on the importance of people's potential for healthy growth. I covered this more in depth in episode one, the different perspectives and the meanings behind them. So we just talked about Freudian psychology, which is your psychoanalytical perspective, focused heavily on unconscious uh, conflicts and unconscious thought processes. Humanistic psychologists focus attention on the importance of people's potential for healthy growth. In the 1960s, the cognitive revolution in psychology involved a renewal of interests in the scientific study of mental processes. In the 1960s, the cognitive re revolution in psychology involved a renewal of interests in the scientific study of mental processes. Cognitive neuroscience studies relationships between thought processes and brain functions. Cognitive neuroscience studies relationships between thought processes, and brain functions.
Contemporary psychology is best defined as the science of behavior and mental processes. Again, I do go more in depth in regards to psychological perspectives and theories in episode one of my study buddy. Okay, contemporary psychology is best defined as the science of behavior and mental processes. Next, smiling is to feel in as behavior. Behavior is to mental processes. I'm going to repeat this really, really slow because I really want you to envision this as I say it. Smiling is to feel in as behavior is to mental processes. The young science of psychology developed from the more established fields of philosophy and biology. The young science of psychology developed from the more established fields of philosophy and biology. The personality theorist Sigmund Freud was an Austrian physician. You will see lots of questions on your, fine, uh, on your psychology exam about Sigmund Freud. Just remember, the personality theorist Sigmund Freud was an Austrian physician. One of the last century's most influential observers of children was the Swiss biologist Jean Piaget. It is spelled Jean, but it's pronounced Jean Piaget. It's French, okay? So it, when you're taking your, um, your exam, it's, it is spelled J-E-A-N, and Piaget is P-I-A-G-E-T. So you need to remember that because it doesn't look like the name, okay? Um, it looks like Jean Piaget, Jean Pia, Piaget, or something like that, but pronounced in French Jean Piaget, okay? So one of the last century's most influential observers in, of children was the Swiss biologist Jean Piaget. Next, the nature-nurture issue refers to the debate over the relative contributions that genes and experience make to the development of psychological traits. Now, I, again, I, I go over this in detail in my other lectures, but this is something that you have to know, okay? The whole nature-nurture debate in psychology. You have to be able to define nature and define nurture and remember it in order to get a slew of questions correct. So nature represents the biological or genetic influence on behavioral traits. That's nature, right? Nature is biological and genetic. Nurture is environmental influences, and nurture begins in the womb. So the nature-nurture issue refers to the debate over the relative contributions that genes, which is the nature side, and experience, which is the nurture side, make to the development of psychological traits. Next, innate ability is to learn the skill. Now, now, before I continue, whenever you hear the word innate, you need to know the definition of that, right? So um, just remember, born with the ability to, okay? So when, whenever you hear innate, 
that would be like the the nature perspective. And the nature perspective is what? Biological or genetic influences. So innate ability, biological or genetic influences is to learn skill as nature is to nurture. So innate ability would be the nature part and the learned skill would be the nurture part because it's strictly what? Influenced by experience or the environment. So let's let's do this again. Innate ability is to learn the skill as nature is to nurture. Innate ability is nature, because innate means what? Biological or genetic influences. So innate ability is to learn the skill. And learn skill is what? The nurture side that says what? Environmental influences shaped that person's behavior or thoughts or whatever. So innate ability is to learn the skill as nature is to nurture. Next, Plato's assumption that certain ideas are inborn is most directly relevant to the controversy regarding nature and nurture. So whenever you hear a particular theorist or theory that emphasizes, you know, this person or personality or traits or behaviors are inborn, that just means they adhere to the nature perspective. And if the idea theory theorists believe that, you know, these behaviors, personality traits or what have you was learned, that's the nurture perspective. So Plato's assumptions that certain ideas are inborn is most directly relevant to the controversy regarding nature and nurture. Next, in the context of debates over the origins of psychological traits, nature is to nurture as Plato is to Aristotle. In the context of debates over the origins of psychological traits, and the origins mean what? The beginning of the debate in regards to uh, psychological traits, the origins of, right? So in context of debates over the origins of psychological traits, nature is to nurture as Plato is to Aristotle, because Plato believed what? He assumed what? Psychological traits was innate, which is the nature perspective. And Aristotle was like, no, 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 no. It's not, you know, it's not um, innate. It, it was learned. And that idea of it being learned is the nurture perspective. Okay, next. A professor believes that young children are frequently able to make morally correct decisions because humans are endowed with an inborn knowledge of basic ethical principles. Did you hear that? The key in this sentence, who cares who the professor is, but the key in this, uh, in this question is with inborn knowledge, okay? Uh, so the professor believes that young children are frequently able to make morally correct decisions because humans are endowed with an inborn knowledge of basic ethical principles. The professor's belief is most consistent with the views of whom? Is it Aristotle or is it Plato? Again, the clue is inborn knowledge. That would be Plato. 
because Plato took the nature perspective, okay, in regards to innate uh, personality traits, and Aristotle took the nurture perspective, which is learned. Next, who suggested that the mind at birth is a blank sheet upon which experience writes? John Locke, L-O-C-K-E. Who suggested that the mind at birth is a blank sheet upon which experience writes? John Locke, L-O-C-K-E. So would that be the nature or nurture perspective? John Locke suggested that the mind at birth is a blank slate, a blank sheet. Is that nature or is that nurture? Correct. That's nurture. If it's a blank sheet, that means that everything about that child, everything about that child that's going to be turned into an adult was learned. And anything learned is nurture, is the nurture perspective. Next. Which 17th century European philosopher believed that some ideas are innate? Rene Descartes. That is a name that uh, you should familiarize yourself with. Um, Rene Descartes actually had some very, very um, interesting ideas. I have a, a video learning lecture on Rene Descartes, so you could view that. But which 17th century European philosopher believed that some ideas are innate? That is Rene Descartes. Next, efforts to discover whether the intelligence of children is more heavily influenced by their biology or by their home environments are mostly directly relevant to the debate regarding nature versus nurture. To discover whether intelligence of children is more heavily influenced by their biology, which would be the nature part, or by their home environments, would be the nurture part, are most directly relevant to the debate regarding nature versus nurture. Next. The survival of organisms best suited to a particular environment is known as natural selection. So natural selection is the survival of organisms best suited to a particular environment. Let's do it again. The survival of organisms best suited to a particular particular environment is known as natural selection. Who highlighted the reproductive advantages of environmentally adaptive traits? Charles Darwin. Who highlighted the reproductive reproductive advantages of environmentally adaptive traits. Charles Darwin. Next. Charles Darwin attempted to explain the species variation that he encountered. Charles Darwin attempted to explain the species variation that he encountered. Next, by suggesting that nature works on what nature endows, psychologists highlight the fact that we are biologically endowed with a capacity for learning and adaptation. By the way, I want you to associate the definition of intelligence because this is the, the latest uh, definition for intelligence. It stems 
from learning and adaptation. So that's pretty popular on, on exams, okay? But let me repeat. By suggesting that nurture works on what nature endows, psychologists highlight the fact that we are biologically endowed with a capacity for learning and adaptation. Different accounts of the same behavior that together give us a more complete understanding represent different levels of analysis. Remember that, okay? The term levels of analysis, levels of analysis. Different accounts of the same behavior that together gives us a more complete understanding represent different levels of analysis. Next, the biopsychosocial approach provides an understanding of social cultural influences integrated within the larger framework of multiple levels of analysis. The biopsychosocial approach provides an understanding of social cultural influences integrated within the larger framework of multiple levels of analysis. Next. Jana has low self-esteem because she often she was often teased for being overweight. Appreciating the complexity of Jana's difficulties requires a biopsychosocial approach. And what is a biopsychosocial approach? It provides an understanding of social cultural influences integrated within a larger framework of multiple levels of analysis. Biopsychosocial approach. Next, the biopsychosocial approach incorporates different levels of analysis which complement one another. The biopsychosocial approach incorporates different levels of analysis which complement one another. Next, the neuroscience perspective in psychology would be more likely to emphasize that behavior is influenced by blood chemistry. The neuroscience perspective in psychology would be most likely to emphasize that behavior is influenced by blood chemistry. Next, which perspective would help us to understand the impact of strokes and brain disease on memory? Neuroscience. Which perspective would help us to understand the impact of strokes and brain disease on memory? Neuroscience. Next, a professor believes that severe depression results primarily from an imbalanced diet and abnormal brain chemistry. The professor favors what type of perspective on depression? The professor believes that severe depression results primarily from an imbalanced diet and abnormal brain chemistry. The professor favors a neuroscience perspective on depression. Next, 
which perspective highlights the reproductive advantages of inherited psychological traits? Evolutionary. So the evolutionary perspective highlights the reproductive advantages and inherited psychological traits. Which perspective highlights the reproductive advantages of inherited psychological traits? Evolutionary perspective. A professor believes that most women prefer tall and physically strong partners because this preference promoted the survival of our ancestors' genes. This viewpoint best illustrates what perspective? Evolutionary perspective. Next. Which perspective studies the relative contributions of our genes and our environment on our individual differences? Behavior genetics. Which perspective studies the relative contributions of our genes and our environment on the individual differences? behavior genetics. Next, a professor attempts to measure the relative contributions of inborn traits and social influences on sexual preferences and behavior patterns. Her research efforts best illustrates the interests of what perspective? behavior genetics. Next, the distinctive feature of the psychodynamic perspective is its emphasis on what? Unconscious conflicts. The distinctive feature of the psychodynamic perspective is its emphasis on unconscious conflicts. Mrs. Alferi believes that her husband's angry outbursts against her result from his unconscious hatred of his own mother. She is looking at her husband's behavior from what perspective? Psychodynamic. Remember, when you hear that word unconscious, I want you to automatically associate which perspective with that word unconscious, especially when dealing in, in regards to early childhood issues. Psychoanalytic Freudian psychodynamic perspective. Which perspective most clearly focuses on how we learn observable responses? Behavioral. Which perspective most clearly focuses on how we learn observable responses? Behavioral. Akira believes that her son has become a good student because she frequently praises his learning efforts. Her belief best illustrates what perspective? The behavioral perspective. Because don't forget, the behavioral perspective says what? Behaviors are learned, whether it's good or bad, positive or negative, behaviors are learned. So Akira believes that her son has become such a good student because she frequently praises his learning efforts. And that is definitely the behavioral perspective. Because if she praises the good behavior, that is what? 
rewarding the good behavior. And when you reward a certain behavior, whether it's good or bad, but, but in this case it's good, the likelihood of that behavior reoccurring again has increased. So when you reward behavior, the likelihood of that behavior repeating itself again has increased. Next, the cognitive perspective in psychology focuses on how people encode, process, store, and receive information. The cognitive perspective, now remember what cognition means, everything to do with the mind and thinking, okay? The cognitive perspective in psychology focuses on how people encode, process, store, and receive information. Next, which perspective is most concerned with how individuals interpret their experiences? The cognitive perspective. Because again, not only, you know, the cognitive perspective focus on how people encode, process, store, and retrieve information, it also focuses on how they interpret that information and their experiences. Next, which psychological perspective is most likely to be concerned with identifying the powers and the limits of human reasoning? Again, that is, that is a, a cognitive perspective. Which psychological perspective is most likely to be concerned with identifying the powers and the limits of human reasoning? That is your cognitive perspective. Next, which perspective in psychology is most likely to focus on how behavior and thinking vary across situations and culture? That is your social cultural perspective. Which perspective in psychology is most likely to focus on how behavior and thinking vary across situations and culture? That is your, soci your social cultural perspective. Next, which perspective would focus on the extent to which different parenting styles are encouraged among various ethnic groups. Again, that is your social cultural perspective. Which perspective would focus on the extent to which different parenting styles are encouraged among various ethnic groups? Social cultural perspective. Dr. Wilson attributes the delinquent behaviors of many teens to the pressures associated with being members of street gangs. Her account best illustrates what type of perspective? A social cultural perspective. Dr. Wilson attributes the delinquent behaviors of many teens to the pressures associated with being members of street gangs. Her account best illustrates a social cultural perspective. Which psychologists are most likely to be involved in basic research? community psychologists. Which psychologists are most likely to be involved in basic research? Community psychologists. Dr. Robinson conducts research on the relationship between brain chemistry and intellectual functioning. 
Which psychological specialty does Dr. Robinson's research best represent? Biological psychology. Dr. Robinson conducts research on the relationship between brain chemistry and intellectual functioning. Which psychological specialty does Dr. Robinson's research best represent? Biological psychology. Dr. Santiago conducts research on how children's moral thinking changes as they grow older. It is most likely that Dr. Santiago is what type of psychologist? Developmental psychologist. Why? Because she conducts research on how children's moral thinking changes as they grow older. And that's the clue right there. Changes as they grow older. And that's, you know, throughout the lifespan. And there are courses called Lifespan Development. It's all about developmental psychology. Dr. Callie conducts research on the relationship between adults' language skills and their capacity to solve mathematical problems. This doctor is most likely a cognitive psychologist because again, uh, she's studying uh, research on the relationship between language skills and, capac and, and the capacity to solve math problems. So it's all about their thinking capacities, right? So that definitely falls under cognitive perspective. Dr. Roberts studies how best to test for individual differences in traits such as anxiety and self-esteem. Which specialty area does her research best represent? Personality psychology. And the clue was what? individual differences in traits such as anxiety and self-esteem so you know whenever you hear individual differences in traits first of all you know that there's personality differences so personality psychology is the answer next dr mills conduct research on why individuals conform to the behaviors and opinions of others. Which specialty area does his research best represent? Social psychology. Dr. Mills conduct research on why individuals, and that's the clue right there, you have to know the difference between a social psychologist and a sociologist. There is a difference. So the social psychologist, the clue is, conducts research on why individuals, how individuals conform to the behaviors and opinions of others. Uh, the sociologists would conduct research on large groups, okay? But the social psychologists would conduct research on individuals and how they, they would conform or behave in groups. Okay, next, which psychologists are most likely to be involved in applied research? Industrial organizational psychologists. Which psychologists are most likely to be involved in applied research? Industrial organizational psychologists. Dr. Lipka fo focuses on ways to improve employee job satisfaction and productivity. He is most likely a industrial organizational psychologist. Next, Dr. Velasquez helps people to make career choices 
by assisting them in identifying their strengths and weaknesses. Dr. Velasquez is most likely a counseling psychologist whenever it has to do with uh, some type of vocational activity that would be counseling psychologists clinical psychologists specialize in providing therapy to troubled people clinical psychologists specialize in providing therapy to troubled people Next, for no apparent reason, Adam has recently begun to feel so tense and anxious that he frequently stays home from work. It would be best for Adam to contact a clinical psychologist. Because why? Clinical psychologists specialize in providing therapy to troubled people. Next, the specialist most likely to have a medical degree is a psychiatrist. Now I covered this in more detail in episode one of my psychology exam study buddy. The difference between a clinical psychologist, a counseling psychologist, and a psychiatrist. So please view that, uh, that learning video lecture. Next, discovering and prompting human strengths and virtues that help individuals and communities to thrive in its major focus of Positive psychology. Now, don't forget positive psychology stems from humanism. But anything to do with um, helping individuals and communities thrive and become more happy and fulfilled, that is positive psychology. Discovering and prompting human strengths and virtues that help individuals and communities to thrive is the major focus of positive psychology. Rather than seeking to change people to fit their environments, community psychologists work to create social and physical environments that are healthy for all. And the question basically asks what type of psychologists would help create uh, social and physical environments that are healthy to all? And the answer would be a community psychologist. The testing effect refers to the enhanced memory that accompanies repeated retrieval of learned information. That's pretty much what we're doing right now. I'm going over, um, you know, psychology test questions to help you pass your psychology exams. And you're going to, you're going to be uh, listening to this over and over and over. And it's going to actually transmit into your long-term memory so you could ace your psychology exam. The testing effect refers to the enhanced memory that accompanies repeated retrieval of learned information. Okay, so I'm going to now go a little quicker because I want you after you of course you know listening to um to this study buddy uh episode a few times you should be able to answer these questions really really fast are you ready are you ready i will give you the answer but i want i want the answer just to pop into your head okay all right edward tetchner was concerned primarily with the study of Sensory experiences. 
Edward Techner was concerned primarily with the study of, repeat after me, sensory experiences. The early school of psychology that used introspection was known as structuralism. The early school of psychology that used introspection was known as structuralism. Who was the functionalist who authored a textbook for the emergent discipline of psychology? William James. Who was the functionalist who authored a textbook for the emergent discipline of psychology? William James. Compared with the structuralist, early behaviorists were much less likely to focus on the study of thinking. Compared with the structuralist, early behaviorists were much less likely to focus on the study of thinking. The scientific study of behavior without reference to mental processes was a special interest to B. F. Skinner. The scientific study of behavior without reference to mental processes was a special interest to whom? B. F. Skinner. Professor Scrody argues that children have an innate concept of justice that enables them to distinguish between fair and unfair rules. This argument is most consistent with the views of Plato. Whenever you hear that word innate, that's Plato. In the context of debates over the origins of ideas, nature is to nurture as blank is to lock, L-O-C-K-E. Descartes. In the context of debates over the origins of ideas, nature is to nurture as René Descartes is to John Locke. Debates as to whether alcohol abuse is biologically determined or culturally influenced are most relevant to the issue of the nature-nurture perspective. Debates as to whether alcohol abuse is biological, that would be nature, determined or culturally influenced, that would be nurture, are most relevant to the issue of nature and nurture. The integrated explanation of human behavior provided by the neuroscience, cognitive, social, cultural, and other perspectives in psychology is most clearly provided by a biopsychosocial approach. So an integrated explanation of human behavior is most likely provided by a biopsychosocial approach. Understanding why the fear of darkness may have contributed to the survival of our human ancestors is most relevant to the what perspective? evolutionary perspective. Understanding why the fear of darkness may have contributed to the survival of our human ancestors is most relevant to the evolutionary perspective. Which perspective would be most helpful for understanding the role of retrieval practice on long-term memory of information? Cognitive. Which perspective would be most helpful for understanding the role of retrieval practice on long-term memory of information? That would be the cognitive perspective. 
Inherited traits are to learned habits as the evolutionary perspective is to the behavioral perspective. Inherited traits are to the learned habits as the evolutionary perspective is to the behavioral perspective. Basic research on persistent human traits like optimism and pessimism is most characteristics of the specialty known as personality psychology. Basic research on persistent human traits, and that's the key right there, human traits uh, like optimism and pessimism is most characteristic with the specialty known as personality psychology. Testing your ability to recall information you have just studied improves your long-term retention of that information. Psychologists have referred to this as the testing effect. Testing your ability to recall information you have just studied improves your long-term retention of that information. Psychologists have referred to this as the testing effect. Okay, this ends this episode um, in regards to me assisting you to ace your psychology exam. Please view my other learning video lectures on everything psychology. Mm -hmm.